Hello, everyone. Today I want to share some good news with you. I know these days have brought unprecedented suffering as humanity has fallen victim to a perilous contagion. The threats to our physical well-being have also meant spiritual suffering as the COVID-19 pandemic has required restrictions on our worship and active participation in the sacramental life of the church. During these weeks, my brother bishops in Illinois and I have been hard at work with civil authorities in designing a plan to reopen our churches in a way that makes your safety our top priority. With that in mind, I'm pleased to tell you that we have reached an agreement with the Office of the Governor on a multi-phase plan for reopening our churches gradually over the next months for the celebration of the sacraments, for private prayer, adoration, and eventually Mass. In designing this plan, we have been guided by four principles. First, we should do everything possible to provide people the solace of the church's sacramental life in a timely and reasonable way. Second, the current situation in Illinois remains dangerous and fragile. While much has been achieved, there remains a potential that those gains could be lost to a second, more virulent wave of coronavirus infections. Third, trust needs to be established that the top priority in any plan is the safety and well-being of people. We cannot take for granted that people will return just because churches are reopened. And finally, we are calling on people to exercise faithful citizenship in this moment. Every Catholic must take personal responsibility for the common good as well as their own safety. From the first pages of Scripture, we have been taught that we are indeed our brother's keeper, a truth that must inspire us as we are called to sacrifice. We must also be motivated by our reverence for life and human dignity to cooperate with public safety norms. This is, at its heart, a moment to proclaim the breadth and depth of what it means to be pro-life, particularly as this virus preys on the most vulnerable in our midst. We must be honest. We expect that restrictions in one form or another will continue for some months. Any plan for reopening our churches for public worship must include taking every precaution to ensure public gatherings do not squander the gains made through our sacrifice in these days. As a phase reopening begins, your pastors and bishops will continue for the present time to offer a Mass in private each day and to live stream and broadcast Masses from our parishes and the archdiocese. We know that many, particularly those in at-risk populations, will not feel safe to come to church, and the dispensation for Sunday Mass will continue until further notice. In sharing this news about our agreement with the governor, I want to assure you of my prayers for you and your family's personal, material, and spiritual well-being. I pray for those who are suffering and those who are caring for them. I pray for those out of work and facing the threat of financial ruin. I pray for all essential workers, for those charged with the heavy burden of making decisions for the common good. And I pray for those who have died and those who mourn them. I also express my appreciation to the many people on the Archdiocesan staff and in the office of the governor for the many hours they have spent helping the bishops design and fine-tune this agreement. Again, I call on all Catholics to seize this moment to exercise faith-filled citizenship in a way that reflects our deep regard for life, our calling as disciples of Jesus, and our love of country. May God bless you all.